Let's talk about lasers. Lasers. Well, specifically, how lasers can be used to measure distances, estimate speed, and map terrains. When it comes to robotics, they're generally better at detecting objects than ultrasonic sensors or those sharp infrared proximity sensors. However, LiDAR units, even the hobby kind, are generally more expensive and should be reserved for serious robotics only. But that's why you're here, right? To build serious robots. When I shine a flashlight on something, light leaves the bulb, travels to the closest surface, and then bounces off. What you're seeing is actually reflected light from those surfaces. It may seem instantaneous, but light actually takes some time to travel from the bulb to my face and then to your eyes, or the camera in this case. The speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second, but for our purposes, we'll say it's about 300 million meters per second. LiDAR units contain a laser that emit short bursts of light. This light bounces off nearby objects, and some of that light is returned to the receiver in the LiDAR. The receiver is usually a photodiode that provides some kind of electrical signal to denote that the return pulse has been received. Assuming that the LiDAR and object are relatively motionless, you know, compared to the speed of light, we can calculate the distance to the object by multiplying the speed of light by the time it took for the laser pulse to make a round trip to the object, and then divide that by two, which accounts for the fact that the pulse had to travel twice the distance, there and back again. For example, if a light pulse takes 20 nanoseconds to travel to the object and then back to the receiver, we could multiply that by the speed of light and divide by two to determine that the distance to the object is three meters away. Most LiDAR systems are infrared, so you can't see them. However, they could really be any color. In case you were curious, the term LiDAR originally comes from a portmanteau of laser and radar in a 1963 article in New Scientist. It wasn't until the 1970s that we turned it into an acronym meaning light detection and ranging. Perhaps the most glamorous use of LiDAR is when several of the Apollo missions left reflective arrays on the surface of the moon. Astronomers to this day can bounce high-powered lasers off these reflective arrays to measure the distance from the Earth to the moon down to the centimeter. More commonly, law enforcement officers have been replacing radar guns with LiDAR guns. By transmitting multiple beams of light and measuring their return times, these handheld LiDAR units can determine the speed of passing vehicles. Scientists have also used LiDAR in satellites and aircraft to map terrain and measure weather patterns. But for our purposes, we want to use it to allow our robot to see obstacles. There are two basic types of LiDAR systems, coherent and incoherent. Incoherent, or direct detection receivers, measure amplitude changes of the reflected light. This simply measures the reflection of the laser pulse, and it's the technology we'll be looking at in the rest of this video. Then there's coherent or heterodyne receivers, which measures the change in the phase or frequency of the reflected light. To accomplish this, some of the light is split and sent to the receiver through one or more reflectors. Heterodyne receivers are generally more power efficient, but require more complex receivers. One of the easiest LiDAR units to use is this Garmin LiDAR Light V3. It uses an infrared beam to measure objects up to 40 meters away accurate to about a few centimeters. It can sample up to 270 times per second, and if you're willing to compromise on accuracy and distance, you can crank that sampling speed up to over a thousand times per second. It can communicate with your processor using I squared C or pulse width modulation, and the nice people at Garmin have even provided an Arduino library for us to use. To show you how a crude LiDAR scanner might be implemented, I've attached the LiDAR light to a servo that sweeps back and forth once every couple of seconds. At each degree, the LiDAR takes a distance reading, and the Arduino Pro Mini reports that distance over serial. It takes about a second to make a sweep, and then another second to reset. On that initial sweep, the distances are sent to a processing sketch so we can visualize what's going on. The light color bars are closer objects, and the darker bars are farther away. So if I put my hand here, you can see it show up as a close object. The idea is that we're taking a slice of the room in a 180-degree arc to see what's in front of us. 
If I was a robot trying to navigate around a course or through a hallway, I would look for the dark areas in this image and drive toward them. These dark areas would likely be large numbers in an array somewhere. Getting an update once every two seconds is rather slow, especially if it's a race. Remember, the LiDAR light can be configured to sample up to a thousand times per second, especially if you don't care about exact distances and only want object detection. You could put it on a faster servo, use a stepper, or get a slip ring to spin it on a gear DC motor, which is exactly what the Scant Sweep does. The Sweep was a Kickstarter project for an inexpensive, continuously rotating LiDAR sensor. As the sweep rotates, it takes multiple distance measurements, which we can see in this demo program. Each point represents a distance measurement by the LiDAR. Here, you can see my hand move toward and away from the sensor. Ideally, you'd be able to use this to detect nearby objects in a 360-degree field of view. Many autonomous vehicles are being designed using this type of sweeping LiDAR to create a 3D image of what's going on around them. While it's pricier than other distance measuring tools like ultrasonic, LiDAR is a very powerful way to gather quick and accurate distance information. When it comes to constructing your robot army, LiDAR is one tool that's available that allows your robots to see the world around them. With that, fellow mad scientists, I wish you luck in your world domination plans. In case you were curious, the term LiDAR actually comes from a, uh, when it comes to no, create a 3D map to see an eye with this yeah, are being developed, you, I don't like that one. When I, one of the easiest, bleh, great, are using this LiDAR, why is it, why does it get,